Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by tbradley90 in the My Investing Club chat. A general reminder for those who do not know, MIC is having a one-year anniversary event where Bao is going to be trading live in front of our members. It's coming up August 17th. Mark your calendars. As an added benefit for our members, the event is 100% and exclusively free for annual and lifetime members. While lifetime, on top of that, get extra coaching before the event and guaranteed front row seating. While most charge for these events, we show our support by making it, again, free for annual and lifetime members. If you are interested in signing up for this event, DM TBradley90 in MIC Slack chat and or email myself at tosh at myinvestingclub.com. Now, today we have a very special video for you guys as Austin, who goes by Aloha Trader in MIC chat, one of our head moderators, comes back for his weekly Thursday webinar every single week at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And this week is episode 11, where he talks about preserving mental capital and many MIC strategies. He goes over some trades, market sentiment, and many other topics. And while today is just a preview of the full-length video, if you want to watch the full-length or any of our exclusive content, then become a member of MIC. The, the topic of tonight is going to be traders' toxicity. Blake, you just made it. Yeah, so, so yeah, to, today we're going to be talking about trader toxicity. And this is, I, I want to talk about it because it's probably something that's happened to everybody. And it's all something that we can relate to. And I think it's an important topic to go over, especially today in this, you know, like there are some people on Twitter that are saying that it's, it's a busy market, right? And like, you know, good on them. But for, for my setups, and I, I know a lot of people in here set up, it's kind of been really slow and dry. And, you know, like, you know, a lot of my trades are focused on small cap runners. We haven't seen a lot of them. Been Been hoping every single day for them. I know like, a lot of people in the room have just been kind of coming for the morning and then leaving. And I don't blame them. But anyway, uh, I think it's a good time to talk about it because this is kind of when, you know, sometimes desperation can, can get you in the wrong spot right before the good market comes. And it's always a pain. So without further ado, let's get started. Here. All right. So traders toxicity. So uh, for people just joining in, um, the webinar is going to look just like most of the other ones, but I'm going to start changing it up towards the end, right before the Q&A session. We are, I'm going to open the floor to uh, inviting a person, probably just one person per webinar um, on and just, you know, on a volunteer basis if anyone wants to come. I might schedule some, like next week I have James um, uh, scheduled, so maybe um, it'll be somewhat ad hoc. If I don't have someone scheduled, I'll open the floor to see if someone wants to come up and talk about their week or, you know, maybe something, anything they want to talk about for my trade. And so I'm just kind of looking for a simple trend trade, right? I'm looking for this level to reject, these lower lows to reject for, um, this is kind of the level that I'm risking off of. I'm waiting for the lower lows to reject a little bit um, on, on retest so that we can continue the downtrend and it'll just be a simple fade trade, right? I'm just, I'm giving it that chance to be nice and easy. And so on the, on the trade, um, this is kind of what happened. So this is the, this right, this right here is the opening to this day. I just wanted to capture this larger picture for the idea. This is what happened then, right? And I'm sorry, I don't actually have my save chart because it, I, it was such a meh trade. I didn't even save it. I should have thinking that like, I didn't know that it was going to be like one of the only trades that I made this week. Uh, so Netflix uh, probably, I guess, I don't know. The best trade of the week because it because it was actually the only trade that actually worked i guess that of the couple that i tried uh but it was just an easy money technical trading breakdown trade right so this was a trade where like um i think i have the yeah uh that, that's the full picture so this was literally just you know like we, we popped up in the morning and, and i was kind of hoping for the trend to fail right this was after the big bounce i think and i, I think i was trying to i or sorry this was this was on a bounce in the fade. And so I was kind of hoping for the morning pop to, I was looking for a breakdown, essentially. I was looking for a breakdown and then ideally maybe we go green to red um, later on and we keep fading down. We didn't get that. Uh, my target was low a days and I got close enough to get my covers. You know, low a day was like 327.50. I counted 328s, um, 328.50 is close enough. Um, and like I trailed at 329 and like, 
I trailed out. They're very, very simple, very, very match trade, kind of the theme of the week. Um, but I was willing to get the a key thing about this trade is I was willing to get back in if 329 failed, projected, and came back down to break 328. Then I'd really feel good. I'd feel good that this technical breakdown, VWAP 330 whole number failed, right? This the failed the retest, and now you know we're going down breaking 328. We have low a day and green to red right ahead of it is dominoes. I'm thinking great. This could actually be set up for another breakdown trade, and I'd be willing to get into that one too. But as you can see, like it just you know we rebounded from there, and I never got my second opportunity. Right. Um, SMSI, now I didn't trade this one, but I still want to include it just because I felt bad for not trading it. Like, but this is, this was a swing long idea I had, um, back on this day and the second day after its first day held so strong. And the second day we didn't dip, we couldn't even dip down past like 525. We were totally held in, we, we, held in, <laughs> we were totally holding strong here on this day. And this is when I kind of started to like it for a long. So coming into this day, you know, I was hoping to see some failed breakdowns, which we didn't really get, but you know, we, we were start, it did hold trend a little bit and that, that was good, kind of good enough. So like over here, you'll remember a few days ago, like I actually got a couple messages that like, thank me for the alert. I didn't alert this. This was just an idea that I had, right? And um, like, I, you know, because it's, it, it closed really strong, it's holding and it's, um, and it's better after like failed reclaims, but we didn't exactly get it. But like, you know, a, a fail of, you know, a, a VWAP failure to break down the morning, failure to break down. These are good for it. I would have liked to have seen one last one. Obviously that might've convinced me to get in, but this is, this was an earnings winner too. And when I say earnings winner, I don't want to get like, I talked in the previous webinar on how I um, separate catalysts and small cap land as shit catalyst and not so shit catalyst, right? Like um, earnings winners, I, I typically don't even care about, right? They typically go into the shit catalyst because like a small cap earnings that lost less isn't really earnings. And if they make like one cent a share, like big deal, right? Like so, I was really kind of um, trying to do that a little bit more with Apple this morning. So like, I, I failed on the long. So my idea originally was that the stock was going to soar today because I thought like the SPY was gapping down pretty, pretty hard. And I thought the SPY was going to just go straight back to 300. And I was eventually right. But like, you know, I didn't time it very well. But so I figured the SPY would go straight to straight to 100 and Apple having good earnings just like the last day. I figured it would just soar straight, straight up too. Um, so you know, I, I got in here thinking that like VWAP's holding and like, you know, it's not the best entry, but I'm, you know, it's not, it's, it's, there's experimental trades anyway. I'm, I, my plan is to add over high day. Uh, I don't get it. I get stuff. I sell it. And then right at around this point, um, I, I start to think that like the market's still going strong and this just epically failed. So I kind of switch bias a little bit. I flip short and I'm thinking I turn this into kind of a relative weakness kind of thesis and I'm right for a little bit. Um, you know, at this point, the spy was ripping and Apple was weak and I wanted, I wanted lower, but I forced myself to recycle based on my other snap trade and kind of how I want to trade large caps in general. When the spy was going really strong, and this is when Apple kind of tanked, right? This, this, this strong cam candle happened, I think, kind of like when, when Apple tanked. And, and that's when I flipped short. So I'm like, wow, so this is pretty weak considering what the spies, spies going exactly up. Like, I think it should and Apple's not. But um, then there was a moment here when the SPY was truly going strong, right? And, and Apple was just tanking, right? And so I was always constantly on the lookout for when is the relative weakness? If it's going to, when is it going to turn around? So I'm like, I'm almost waiting for a pull on the SPY and then I'm seeing what Apple should do. Um, with a relative weakness trade, if the SPY is going up and Apple's staying kind of weak, like when the stock was, when the stock was uh, pushing up, this, this was a bounce attempt. When Apple pushed, when the SPY pushed up, it like bounced up to here to view up and quickly failed again, right? And I was ready for that. Like it's, at this point, I had the relative weakness idea. So the market sentiment is just dick. Like the market sentiment just sucks. Like it's, I mean, there is, wow, it, it actually showed the GIF. That's so cool. I thought it was just going to be a stagnant picture. The market participant, everything is literally just dying, right? SMSI is holding, but it didn't like, 
I put it as a green ticker on it. It's a positive for the market, but like it didn't really do anything after that day. It's just kind of still holding, but I guess it's a green in this, it's somewhat green in this market. Um, Apple was, was, you know, like showed really good strength. Now, all of this, by the way, I made all of this before this stupid Trump tweet today with the China tariffs. <laughs> so this is what the market was before the Trump tweet. So I kind of want to like separate it. Um, the market's still pretty much dead. There's no runners. There's, you know, like um, the Netflix recovery is still good. Um, the, the Beyond recovery was good until like it tanked today. Um, uh, these are the large cap vibes. Spy reclaiming today, reclaim 300 before the, the Trump tweet and the China tariffs and it just tanked. So that's obviously the negatives. July earnings is in full force, right? Like it was full force last week. It's last, last week. It was full force last week, it's full force this week, and there's just no movers, right? So these are all the negatives. Like, I don't even have any sparks of hope. I don't even know what to look forward to tomorrow, right? So um, they're sure, that as far as technical setups, which is what I like to trade and what I think most people trade, it's pretty bleak out there. I'm sure there's fundamental traders that, you know, there, there's always something to dig up, right? There's always something to dig up. And if you're a fundamental trader, this is the kind. This is the time that you're taking to to, to research your to research your stocks to to go through all the tickers you think that you know you might see potential PRs for any you know if you have a if you have a big um, Excel database right of stocks where um, where you have warrants listed for each individual ticker and you know when they expire if their expirations are coming up this is the kind of time where you're taking advantage of the the, the slow uh, mover time, preparing for when they might come up, right? So there's always something to do, right? There's always work to be done. Even when the market's slow, there's always work to be done. So <laughs> I changed this one from last week. We're, we're in the decrepit market. Um, <laughs> this is uh, like last week. It's funny. It's so funny how like it's literally like every other week that we can, we can like almost go in a circle. But like last week we were here, I thought we were gonna be here, but maybe we're taking a little pit stop to the decrepit market first, um, as far as technical market. This is normally the way it goes. There's a buyer's market, a seller's market, and a dead market. And right now we're, 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 we're full in the dead market, right? Last week it was kind of the tanker's market where we had some movers, but everything tanked. Now it's almost like there's no movers. And I think eventually as July earnings season comes to a close, our earnings season is, We'll, we'll be coming to a close. We're going to start getting into the, into the, into the, everyone's restless. Like let's start, let's start buying the PRs again, right? Uh, so into into some trader topics for the week. Uh, oh man, I'm so excited, Joe. Like I'm I'm ready. <laughs> uh, anyway, so a trader topic I want to go over. This is like probably the shortest slide I've ever done, but it's a really important topic. I don't want to sell. It'll be the bottom, right? Or I don't want to cover. It's going to be the top. I don't want to cover. Like I, you, like, I don't want to cover. Don't want to cover. Don't want to cover. Don't want to cover. Like that means for sure that you're going to sell the bottom or cover the top. Like the, not wanting to sell the bottom, that means that you don't want to sell. Um, you don't want to sell because you don't think the trade's over even and if your stop is and like the stop has been invalidated and you're still holding on basically what this means is your stop according to your plan says that the trade should be over now if you ever are past your stop but you don't want to sell because it might be the bottom first of all that shows that you don't have a lot of conviction in your stop but basically what it now turns into is you're no longer in for a stop. So this is a big one for me. And this is a personal uh, topic I kind of want to go over. And it's the I hope, the I hope, um, the <laughs> it's the I hope versus the I think that. And I posted a little bit about this in the chat, but I, I knew I wanted to go over it in today's webinar. So it's my, it, it, it's, it's personally my biggest struggle. And I, and I didn't really have this struggle until I started longing and shorting. Um, but it's, I, I also used to have this battle when I would short, um, when I would short stocks, but I, I, I wanted it higher, right? Like, you know, I, I wanted it higher so I could short a better setup, but 
you know, I didn't think it would get very high. It's, it's the same kind of struggle. So only, so pure short sellers can still uh, resonate with this. Um, so the I hope versus the I think is what you hope you, the stock's going to do versus what you actually think it's going to do. If you had a gun to your head, what, what are you going to do? If you had a gun to your head, what would you trade, right? How would you trade it if, if, if your life depended on it, if your family's life depended on it? If you had to pick the direction, which way are you going to go? Now, that, it may not be the way you want it to go, right? Like, so, for example, DMPI. I, I posted about DMPI. I thought it was going to just die. I, I, I thought it was just going to die. Or was it DMPI or was it the other one that died? I, I forget. But I posted about it in chat. Like, I thought this stock was going to die. I was really hoping it wasn't, right? And so this hope can sometimes force along into me. And it's, it's, it's not the best like it's not obviously a good trade. And so this, but so this kind of stems from my long term short stock when I say that longs inherently have an innate good risk to reward, but a bad probability in the small cap land, whereas shorts will typically have a uh, inherent probability factor to them, but the risk to reward is often really bad by the time the probability is known. My question is a question I get, I get asked a lot uh, too. And I just, I never see anybody ask these types of questions because I don't know if they think, if they know that this type of Q and A is like this, but the first question is like for everybody that for all the members that they find like the setup that they want to track or that they want to trade or that they understand when you found that setup, did you find just one? Did you find just two? Where did you start? Um, finding your edge and when you found your edge what was your mentality when that trade came around in terms of risk management in terms of uh, basically how confident you were ready to take the trade can you hear me oh sorry Oh, were, were, were you asking? I'm asking you. Oh, crap. So, one more no, time. I'm not talking. I'm coming on here asking you questions, okay. bro. I said time. I got questions, not answers. <laughs> one more time, Joe. I, I, one more time, Joe. Okay. All right. So, um, if th – this is a question I got, I got, I've gotten asked a lot many, many times is, you know, that people come in and they, they – see the three setups that we talk about, four setups, or, or maybe even the five setups by now. Um, and they always ask, which one uh, is going to be the best, is going to be the one that I want to trade? Um, and they find the one that they want to trade, right? Right. And like for you, when, when you started doing this, did you find one setup that you wanted to trade? Or did you find five setups that you wanted to trade? Or did you find two, ten whatever it may be. And then when that setup or setups came along, how did you attack it in terms of risk management and in terms of confidence? Did you immediately, as soon as you saw that setup, you were like, sweet baby Jesus. Oh yeah. This is like a fresh gift on a Christmas morning. I mean, or, or were you like, were you a deer in the headlights yeah, being okay. that you knew the edge, you knew how you needed to trade it, but it's that it's that hesitation of hitting G one on the hotkey, and you're like, uh, 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 yeah. So the answer is I was talking about the answer is I was a little bitch. <laughs> That's the answer. I was a little bitch, like literally, like I would I I would see it, I would know the edge, and I would be like, yes, yeah. but like I actually said when I first started trading. And I knew it was crap, but I was like, you know, maybe I'm going to be the, the first trader to not ever have a loss because I seem to get this pretty good. Like, <laughs> I actually said that. Like, no, no bullshit. What a no, dick. No, bro. And so, like, <laughs> and then, so just, the, just having that in my mind, like, I'm not going to lose. I'm so right. Like, I, I would see the setup. I would know, and I'd be like, well, let me just make sure that this one, like, works. And then I'll get the next yep. one. Now that'll pan into the next question here is, and this is a, this is a question me. So me and James and Devon, 
or Dr. Blunt, um, have we have a little like text stream that we we just text the three of us just text each other all the time and we talk about anything and everything stocks life anything else and one thing that we uh mentioned all three of us mentioned was so i'm big on uh always knowing the fundamental reason for the move um and knowing you know, what the flow is, what the market cap is, what institutional, going through the motions, you know, all the checklists that everybody looks at, doing that stuff. But all three of us had said the same thing. And this is really what it came down to was uh, the biggest trades we had, we knew the least amount of information about the ticker. Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at Tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T O S H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right. See you guys.